Hello beautiful people and welcome back to a new video. My name is Evelyn Bartha and everybody who is new to my channel, welcome to my channel. Everybody who has been already here, welcome back and thank you so much everyone who has subscribed to my other channel which is called Esoterica with Evelyn. So if you are interested about readings then please feel free to subscribe there as well. So in this video what I would like to talk about is October and uh, what is to come, what energies will be dominant, what astrological aspects will be influencing the collective. Yeah, just to do an energy update as I always do at the end of every single month about the month to come. And in my Equinox video I already talked a little bit about the Libra season and then what is Libra about, so I'm not gonna get into that. But it's very interesting because we are leaving some very intense energies, but that is not over. So we just had Equinox that was bringing this intensity. And Equinoxes are always big turning points. And then the first half of September was Virgo season. And Virgo is about daily habits, daily routines, also developing new habits, new routines, and then maybe bringing forth new projects as well. So interestingly, I did feel this energy of creating, creating and doing and doing and this very earthly energy and I couldn't stop myself from doing things. And then as we entered Libra, I did feel the energy is being balanced out. So I feel much more balanced now and I don't have that urge to create, to do. So I was just like going like that, like up, 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 up. And uh, it was going to an extreme already, this urge to create. And now like things are calming down. So yeah, it's very nice to, to feel how much these energies, these planets are influencing us. So October is going to be a big month. And when I say big, I really mean it because we not only had the equinox, but now we are entering the eclipse season and that is going to be a super wild ride, trust me, because it is always like that towards the end of the year. So we have two eclipses. We have one at the end of the month on the 25th of October, which is a new moon solar eclipse in Scorpio. So a highly, highly transformative period because Scorpio is about transformation. And then on the 8th of November, we have blood moon eclipse in Taurus. So these vibes of these eclipses will be felt throughout the month of October. Plus we are starting October with the energies of the six planets being retrograde. So at the moment we have Neptune, Uranus, Mercury, Mars, Saturn and Pluto. So all these are retrograde at the moment. But as we are journeying forward in October, we have Pluto, Saturn and Mercury stationing direct. So the energies of this retrograde season will start fading a little bit. We'll, we'll start getting lighter and lighter. So October is about bringing incredible healing but it can bring some comforting energies as well because we will have a full moon in Aries on the 9th of October and uh, yeah I will talk about that a little bit but that will get us to the eclipse season so that will launch us deep into into those energies of these eclipses so on the 1st of October we have Venus that is opposing Jupiter and that will feel like a very subtle energy so it will not be very noticeable but because Venus is about love and then Jupiter is about expansion, it will bring like this heart expansion. And on the 2nd of October, Mercury finally stations direct after being retrograde for like three weeks since the 9th of October, since the 9th of September, sorry. So that was a very intense period of time as well. So it will feel like, yeah, we are back in business and uh, communication and then travel will be back to normal. So no more delays, no more misunderstandings, sort of. But it will be a slow and steady process because it will take some time for Mercury to get back to its initial speed and uh, initial strength as well. So by mid-October, things will start going back to normal. So we have to be patient with these energies. And what will be very dominant in terms of the energies is that we will feel that difficult conversations will become easier to handle, like communication is getting easier as well. And then also it will be easier to negotiate a very difficult contract as well. And then also cloudy things becoming clearer finally. 
And on the 8th of October, Pluto goes direct in Capricorn after being retrograde since the 29th of April. So quite a long time. And then Pluto is about death and rebirth. When Pluto goes direct, we will be able to, to see clearly our uh, transformative process as well. Like how far we have come and what we have become. And we are able to see with greater clarity the ways that we have changed as well. We can see how the endings that we have experienced are redirecting us or getting us into a new direction now. So Pluto is about endings as well, but being direct is giving us this great clarity about why certain endings happened. And we can, we can have these aha moments and we can connect the dots as well about all these processes that were very, very difficult and were serving our transformation. Like transformations are very difficult processes. And when we talk about that, we always have to let go of something that was very significant to us, that were parts of ourselves, our identity, our ego, because ego loves identity. So it's about the shedding of our layers, like all the layers that are no longer helping us in our process of initiation. And yeah, so it's about a new direction. And it is also an opportunity for us to look at our finances, look at our career path as well. And if those things are serving our transformation in the best way as well. And when we talk about Pluto, we can always talk about an underlying energy of a big change and global transformation as well, because Pluto is about that. So a global change and a rebalancing of a power on a global level. And that can be on the horizon as well when Pluto goes direct again. So this can be something that we might see in the collective as well, playing out a rebalancing of the power and things going maybe a little bit crazy before they start balancing out because we always need you know two extremes one extreme and the other extreme the negative the positive polarity to both play their part sometimes on an extreme level in order things to come back in a balanced way and then on the 9th of october we have full moon in aries uh what i mentioned at the beginning of the video and Aries is the sign of the warrior, is this fiery, sometimes aggressive, impulsive sign that is being ruled by Mars. So it's the sign of war as well, and Mars being the planet of war, obviously. It can bring like energies that are very volatile. So something might happen that can trigger our healing in this period of time of the full moon. And even though the healing and the results of our healing process can be positive, the process itself might feel a little bit aggressive, just as Aries is. So it might feel like we have to get something with all costs. And uh, it can feel very impulsive as well and coming out of nowhere. So this shocking energy, this fiery energy. And coming out of nowhere, not in a sense that you didn't see it coming at all or you did not expect it at all. But just because the energies can get so confronting and so aggravating, you might feel like, oh my God, I didn't expect this to be so, so aggressive and so, so straightforward. So yeah, this can be feeling like that. However, the results will be very, very healing and very, very positive. There's a need for that aggressive energy sometimes for us to really wake up. But then also at this period of full moon, we can feel like, so we might reach a point when we are super obsessed with our healing and so obsessed that we even lose sight of our journey, of our vision as well and what was important for us. And it can be very easy to develop this tunnel vision to focus so, so obsessively on our healing that we might ask questions like how the healing should happen or we might have expectations about how the healing should happen and when the healing should happen, when the timing is right. So tunnel vision is not necessarily a bad thing because it gives you that focus and that passion, the energy to put into something, and that is that Aries energy. However, the problem when it comes to healing is that you become obsessed with the fact that you're not healed, that you're flawed, that you have traumas, and you're not a whole human being, that there's something wrong with you. 
So that is the, the downside of wanting to hear so badly because it entails that there's something that is not complete within you. So this is something that we have to bear in mind that even though we have our past and we have our old wounds and old hurts and our traumas, yet we still are whole the way we are. We are still whole human beings. We are complete with our imperfections because our imperfections and our past is also our ally. Is also something that shaped us. Is also something that provided all the tools and uh, our survival kit, in a sense. So instead of going with full force for our healing, we have to allow it. And we have to let go of the idea that we are not complete. So we have to release these expectations about our healings. And then also this is a great period of time to let go of our silent resentment. And letting go of our resentments doesn't mean that we just sweep them under the rug or we try to forgive other people no matter what. It means that we are facing our resentments. We are not shying away from our resentments. We are not shying away from our shadows. And this way we can let go of those resentments. And then also Aries and Mars in general is giving us this energy to be able to, to embrace our anger. And to look at our anger as our greatest ally that can pinpoint where we are out of alignment in our lives. It can direct us to the right path to get back into alignment. So anger is a great ally, is a great asset. And this is what this full moon will make us understand and will teach us. And then on the October 23rd, we have Scorpio season. So we are entering Scorpio season. So we are leaving Libra, which is an air sign, and we are entering a water sign. And entering a water sign always means a highly sensitive period. So we might become highly sensitive. And then it will be about drawing our energy inward and letting the transformation happen within us. Because Scorpio is about death and rebirth. And it's about this transformative period, this metamorphosis. So it will be a time of aha moments. And we have to let our extra sensitivity that is being activated to develop a greater awareness, a greater perception as well. So in Scorpio season, your sensitivity is your biggest ally because it is drawing your attention to your inner world. And then you can pick up on other people's energy as well. And that is creating awareness. That is telling you which people are a great match to your energy and which people are the ones that are having lots of red flags. Okay, so awareness and uh, psychic abilities will be very, very um, activated at this time. And then also intuition, very, very activated. Scorpio is a great analyst when it comes to the human psyche. So use this period of time to start reading people's energy properly. So use this period to be able to read people in a way that you might have not read them before. Okay, so I really love Scorpios because they are very much paying attention to details and they are paying attention to the human psychology and they're they are very profound as well so i love that because that is a great psychic gift on the october 23rd we have saturn that is going direct in aquarius so saturn has been retrograde since the 4th of june and we will start to see in this period how our challenges have shaped us and opened us to new opportunities and new perspectives. And Saturn is the planet that is ruling authorities, rigid rules, and everything that is traditional, so very masculine energy. And then Aquarius wants to do things in a non-conformist way, is obsessed with its freedom, it doesn't like rules. So these opposing energies and then of course like Aquarius is being ruled by Uranus so these opposing energies which I talked about many times are representing basically the rebooting of the system just destroying everything that was old and bringing in bringing forth this this new world but the downside of it can be the new world order as well and when it comes to technology as well and then Aquarius also is ruling technology so this period when we had Saturn retrograde in Aquarius, the global system was very much rebooting. I mean, it has been going on for a while, but certain things that happened in the past few months might have felt very contrasting compared to how things were like a few months ago before June, for example. So 
we don't see the COVID narrative coming back all of a sudden. And then last year, this time, it was coming back full swing. We already were hearing about regulations and then the vaccine thing as well was going on full swing. And then now it has disappeared. So now, because on the 23rd of October, Saturn is stationing direct again in Aquarius, we will see these um, opposing energies again between the old and the new. And it's a bit like some people will want the old system and then a part of us wants the old system but in a sense that the old being represented by something organic and then yes we do want something new so there's this uranian energy in us we do want something new but we don't want your new we want our new that is being based on the old so we want our new that is being based on humanity's history, on humanity's past, and our organic evolution, if that makes sense. So we all have this Saturnian and then this Uranian energy within us. And both the Saturnian and the Uranian energies are having their downsides, because the downside of the Saturnian energy is that ruling over humanity and lording over humanity mentality. But then the downside of the Uranian energy is this scientific materialism and technology that doesn't want the organic human evolution. So you understand that we need to find a balance. And this is our challenge with Saturn and Aquarius. So because Saturn is also the Lord of Karma, when it's retrograde, it's an opportunity to pay karmic debts and to clear and to transcend those karmic debts. So the energy since the 4th of June were very much about karmic debts and clearing those things. And that's why there were lots of themes that were coming up in terms of our karma and trauma as well. And then when Saturn starts stationing direct again, sometimes it can bring us some gifts. And then also the celebrations of our efforts and hard work that we put into clearing our karmic debts. In the past months so it can come with uh, great and beautiful gifts as well and then on the october 25th we have scorpio new moon solar eclipse so that is that solar eclipse which will be again like a very transformative energy especially when it's happening in scorpio so this is one of the main features and main themes of the month of october which will be felt throughout the whole month and it will very much open a new chapter in our lives. So eclipses are always about starting a new chapter, as I said, and they are always tend to bring fated events that are kind of like catapulting us to the next level, to our next level of initiation and to raise our consciousness and the level of evolution, so to speak. So we did have some eclipses in April and May and then issues and themes that were dominant in our lives back in May and April might come back for revisiting for resolution as well. Or some similar themes may arise from that period of time. So think about eclipse as a cosmic hand that wants to redirect you and realign you with what is your path that want to help you to realign your destiny and to solve your issues. Whether you want it or not, it will happen because this is how the law of the universe works. And I don't want to get into eclipses too much because I will want to do a separate video for these two eclipses, but this will be definitely a time when we will be able to close cycles, when we will be able to bring things to an end from the past and to make space for new things to enter and both individually and then globally as well. It is a new chapter that is beginning. And there are two more things that I wanted to talk about. And one is them Jupiter entering Pisces on the October 28th. And then the other one is Mars retrograde. So Jupiter is entering Pisces. And it's important to know that because it first entered Pisces back in May 2021, so last year. And then this year, so one year later, it entered Aries. And that was the first time in 12 years that it entered Aries. And that was giving us this push of energy, you know, because Jupiter is the planet of expansion and entering Aries was giving us this energy of moving forward with all costs. And now 
it will enter Pisces. So we will have this feeling of hangover after taking a lot of action. So it's almost like stepping from one reality to a different reality, one dimension to a different dimension. And that can give you this feeling of dizziness, like feeling of hangover. So it will be a time to look inward more and then to focus on your fantasies, to tie up loose ends as well, to tie up unfinished business too, and then spend some time alone after taking a lot of action. Okay, so it will be a period when you feel like, all right, now I need to focus a little bit inward and there's expansion that is happening in my inner world. And because Pisces is about awareness, love, compassion, empathy, and then Jupiter is about expansion. So love and empathy will be expanding. And because it is a retrograde, so Jupiter is retrograde, that is why that expansion of love will start inward. When we talk about retrogrades, there's always this inward energy that is happening and the focus is being shifted inward. So that is why those of you that were born at the time of a planet being retrograde, there's always an inner focus. There's a focus that is being directed in your inner world and that change that is being represented by that particular planet is happening inside of you, if that makes sense. So the starting point with this retrograde in Pisces, Jupiter retrograde in, in Pisces, is in your inner world and everything starts with you. So compassion and understanding and empathy in the world starts in your inner world and starts with your compassion towards yourself. And then, as I said, Mars is going retrograde on the 30th of October in Gemini. And the effect of this retrograde will be felt way before that. So I think throughout the whole month of October, because Mars is ruling our energy levels, is ruling our ability to take action, is giving us this stamina and feelings of motivation. When goes retrograde, those energies might feel a little bit sluggish. So it might feel much more challenging for us to manage our energy levels. It might feel more challenging to take action as well. We might start questioning our motivation as well. And the downside of it is that we want to take action and we have to manage our energy levels, but in a way that we don't burn out. So there's a possibility for burnout and we have to understand that we have to take a step back and we have to rest and recuperate whenever we feel like we, we need to do that. So our bodies will let us know when we need to do that. And yeah, just finding the balance in order not to burn out. And because it is retrograde in Gemini, and Gemini is about communication, is a great communicator, we need to find our tone as well. We need to face our fears when it comes to speaking up, when it comes to finding our unique voice and using our voice in situations that we did not use our voice in the past. So retrospection about what is our unique voice and when it's destructive and when it's constructive to use that voice because Mars can be very destructive as well. But if we know how to handle Mars and these energies of Mars, then the results can be super positive and super constructive as well, both individually and collectively. All right, so I think this is what I wanted to say about the astrological aspects. And I thought maybe I should pull some cards as well. So I will pull some cards and let's see what can we expect collectively, so on a collective level. And I will do readings on my other channel as well, because there is where I combine astrology and uh, tarot as well. So I, I am doing and I'm planning to do collective readings on that channel. Okay, so October collective spirit. What can we expect in October 2022? All right, so we have the Ten of Swords that is upright. Is it upright or it's reversed? I think it's reversed because that is the upright position. All right, so Ten of Swords. So that card just flew out of the deck, from the deck. We have the Eight of Wands upright. We have the Six of Wands that is reversed. We have the Knight of Wands that is reversed as well. And then we have the Two of Wands that is upright. All right. Bottom of the deck, we have the Magician that is reversed. 
Okay, let me see. So this is called the Vice Versa Tarot, if anyone is interested. And then we have images on both sides. All right, so first we got the Ten of Swords that was upright. So the Ten of Swords, that was reversed actually, but it doesn't really matter because what is important on this card is that there's a person that is looking at that knight there that was injured and then is, is dead as well. And then interestingly, we have an eclipse there. So when the Ten of Wands shows up, it talks about an end of a cycle because there's a defeat there. There's no more movement forward and the person has hit rock bottom in a sense. But now there's an opportunity to start anew. And then be, because we have the eclipse there and eclipse season is always marking a beginning of a new chapter, there's a new beginning for the collective as well. And then we had the Six of Wands, which is also a fire energy, but it was reversed. So it's saying like there's always this energy of a failure in the collective and then also taking a step back and realizing that we might have lost maybe a battle, but the war is not over. So again, is that energy of losses in our lives and endings but those endings are serving a new beginning and making space for something new to enter and if you're looking at this card this is perfectly symbolizing what i was talking about this beginning of a new chapter and then shedding old layers of us because the person on that image has left that old armor he was defeated yes in the battle in the war he was defeated but then he can start anew and there's this eclipse there and then the sun is shining again and then he can he can start a new life so it's about the rebirth of something new and leaving behind that old armor and probably we don't even need armors so it might feel like we are taking a step back and we lost a battle that was important for us maybe we can put down that armor because we will not need it anymore because whatever is to come is not going to hurt us it's not going to wound us the way that the past was wounding us so this is actually talking about a great transformation a great metamorphosis and then we had the eight of wands as well which is an energy that is coming in super fast so whatever happens whatever transformation we are going through it will be so amplified during this uh, eclipse season that things will start happening super super quickly super super fast and individually as well, but then globally as well. So great transformational period. And then, so we have a lot of um, wands here, a lot of fire energy. And then we have the two of wands as well, which is about looking into the future and then being ready to embark a new journey, to embark uh, new endeavors, um, new insights and uh, feeling ready for it, really. But then we have the Page of Wands as well, which really wants to take action. I think I said Knight of Wands, uh, but it was actually the Page of Wands reversed. And that is about wanting to bring forth something new and wanting to take action, you know, this passionate energy. Let's go for it. But it's reversed. So that is indicating also some anger, some aggressiveness. So maybe that Mars energy, that Aries energy as well, which will set the stage for the eclipse. So for us to enter this eclipse season, so full moon in Aries. And look at that. This is like, again, like a transformational energy there because it's like the birth of the phoenix that is rising from the ashes so look at that um phoenix energy there that that fiery impulse so definitely there's a lot of expansion in that sense that we will shed the old layers and that will bring new things in in the collective as well and almost like what is coming into my mind is bur burning bridges. So burning bridges when it comes to things that are no longer serving us because we know that if we hold on to those things, then we are just shooting our expansion in the foot, so to speak. So when it comes to global institutions as well, I feel like that we will be very present in the collective, burning bridges and things happening very fast. So whatever transformation will will happen in the collective in our societal structures as well it will come in very fast because eclipses are about that so transformation but then super super fast transformation and then at the bottom of the deck we had the magician that was reversed and that is talking about us having to recognize our own power 
and having to recognize when that power is being used for destructive purposes because all those opportunities that we have to transform our lives and then by transforming our personal lives we can also transform the collective and all those opportunities are presenting us with the two sides of the coin with the two polarities the destructive polarity and the constructive polarity and this card is also telling me that we are not aware of how much power we have and how much influence we have on our collective and those that are around us how much we are impacting and influencing other people's lives so it's really about recognizing when you have to take responsibility for others because yes to a certain degree we are all responsible for how other people are feeling and then to recognize when you are taking too much responsibility for things that are not even your business so it's really finding the resolution and what is empowerment when it comes to our power and taking responsibility so recognizing the difference between an unfulfilled potential because we are afraid to use our powers and what is using too much power for destructive purposes so i feel like there will be a lot of emphasis put on the healing of the misuse of power so in our own lives as well but then when it comes to authorities so healing that misuse of power and that scattered energy that comes with the misuse of power as well. So healing that collectively. I hope it makes sense because <laughs> I don't know if I express myself. And then also what comes into my mind and what came as a download now was about responsibility. So knowing when to take responsibility because we are taking too much responsibility for things that are not ours and when we are avoiding to take responsibility and in that case we have to be more responsible than we were before okay so what is empowering for us because if we were avoiding responsibility then empowerment is to start being more responsible and if we were taking too much responsibility for others then we might want to put aside that responsibility and to start just breathing and focusing on ourselves okay so there's a difference all right um let's pull some oracle cards as well and i want to see what will be the dominant theme in october so one more card what is healing in the collective in the month of october so we have misalignment number 17 so miracles become normal once we face all of the aspects of our life in the same direction there you go so there will be a lot of um, healing in terms of what is being misaligned in our lives and uh, the focus will be shifted on how we can align ourselves again and that is again this eclipse uh, energy that as i said whether we want it or not we will be faced with what is not aligned in our lives and we have to allow anger and we have to allow emotions to pinpoint that misalignment in our lives because we cannot manifest anything and we cannot bring forth these new energies of this transformation unless we can pinpoint where we are not being aligned with our true selves with our spirit and with the universe uh, in general so october will be a month of intense healing and then integration in that sense because when we realign and really start to align with what we are that is what integration is about and that is happening based on the law of the universe so cause and effect because the universe always wants balance always wants alignment and then at the bottom of the deck interestingly we have 11 metamorphosis so power and strength lie within our surrender to change so yeah guys as i said there's a huge huge metamorphosis and transformation that is taking place in october great opportunity for healing on all levels and it might feel triggering and it might feel sometimes aggressive as well and then just confronting but the death process and the rebirth itself is very painful is very challenging and it is about not only letting go of those old identities but then also recognizing them and how they served served us and kind of understanding the whole process because there's no real transformation that is taking place unless we understand 
why those things that were painful were part of our lives. So it's almost like making peace with that old self. And when we make peace, then we can shed those old layers. Because until we don't make peace, we are still holding on to those old layers. So it's about honoring that part of ourselves that was holding so much onto other people and the toxicity of other people and the toxicity of ourselves. And don't get me wrong, I don't like to use the word toxic because it depends from which perspective we are looking at something. And everything has a great value as well. But it's really about honoring that part that was misaligned. So it was only a misalignment that was causing distortion in our minds about who we are. So we have to honor that part. And then October will be great for that because we will be able to recognize when those losses and why those losses needed to happen and why they happened. So yeah, guys, great healing, great transformation, huge transformation individually and collectively as well. And I will probably get into the eclipses more in depth later on. So I will make separate videos. But yeah, this is what I'm seeing for today. And I hope that it resonated. I hope that it made sense as well. You can subscribe to my channel if it did. You can subscribe to my other channel as well. If you want to support my work, you can do it on Patreon. I'm open for personal readings now as well. So you're more than welcome to visit the link down below and then to book a personal reading. And yeah, join my Telegram, whoever is using it. And thank you for being here. Thank you for everybody's support. I love every single one of you. I wish everybody an amazing October. Take care of yourselves. And I cannot wait to see you next time.